Growing up, I never wanted for anything. Well, except for that one time I asked for a parrot for Christmas. You see, I was too young to understand the responsibilities that came with owning such a pet. In my innocence, all I could picture was how amazing it would be to have a pet that could talk back to me. My childhood was a simple one, filled with laughter and the intoxicating aroma of freshly baked pizza. We lived in a four-story tenement with our family pizzeria occupying the first floor. It was a constant hub of activity, a place where the vibrancy of life was ever-present. I was never alone, and my parents were always close by, a comforting presence as they bustled around serving customers and managing the day-to-day -day running of the restaurant. Unlike many kids whose parents left home for work, mine were always within reach. I found solace in this, even though they were often too caught up in the whirlwind of the pizzeria to pay us any mind. I had two siblings, Russell and Rebecca, both of whom were significantly older than me. They started helping out at the pizzeria, as soon as they were legally allowed to, and soon, I followed suit. The pizzeria was more than just a family business, it was a place of learning and growing for us kids. It was here that I had my first taste of hard work, and the value of money. Everything was measured in terms of pepperoni pizzas. How many pizzas would we need to sell to afford a new pair of shoes, or a new fridge? Watching my parents and grandparents work tirelessly day in and day out, I began to appreciate every single penny they gave me. It was a simple life but it was our life, and it was this life that sparked my curiosity about money, about why some people seemed to have an abundance of it while others like us, had to work so hard for every single penny. This curiosity, this burning question would become the driving force of my life, leading me on a journey of financial discovery and understanding. When I was old enough to help out in the pizzeria, it was my first encounter with the concept of money. In my family everything was measured in pepperoni pizzas. Now that might sound odd to you but let me explain. Growing up in a house above a pizzeria, the world of dough, cheese and tomato sauce was our normal. My father, a man of few words, had a unique way of teaching us about the value of money. He used the humble pepperoni pizza as a unit of measure. The pepperoni pizza, a staple of our family business, became a symbol of hard work and a tool for understanding financial concepts. You see, every ingredient, every topping had a cost. And to make a profit, we had to sell our pizzas at a price that not only covered these costs but also left something extra, something we call net profit. This net profit was where my father's lessons truly began. When I wanted a new pair of shoes, he wouldn't just hand me the money, instead he'd ask, Robbie, how many pepperoni pizzas do we need to sell to afford those shoes? That simple question made me think, it made me understand the connection between work, money, and the things we desire. Every day I saw my parents and grandparents toiling away in our pizzeria, making dough, grating cheese, slicing pepperoni, serving customers, it was endless. But it was this relentless work that put food on our table, shoes on our feet, and yes, even sent me to college. Their dedication gave me a profound respect for money. It wasn't just a piece of paper or a number in a bank account, it was a representation of their sweat, their time, their sacrifices. And every time I wanted to buy something I calculated how many pizzas we would have to sell. This pepperoni pizza philosophy, as I like to call it, shaped my entire outlook on money and wealth. It made me realize that money doesn't just appear, it's earned, slice by slice. In high school I started to notice a stark contrast between my friends and I. While my life revolved around the pizzeria, their lives seemed to revolve around an endless supply of money. Their parents drove fancy cars, they wore designer clothes and they never seemed to worry about the cost of anything. On the other hand, I was the kid who equated every purchase to the number of pepperoni pizzas we had to sell. A new pair of shoes? That would be 30 pizzas. A school trip? That might be 100 pizzas. While my friends had the freedom to spend, I had the responsibility to earn. It wasn't a matter of jealousy, but rather a point of curiosity. I found myself wondering, how did they get so rich? What were they doing differently? Their wealth seemed to come so easily, so naturally. It was like they were playing a game I didn't know the rules to. I remember one specific incident that really drove this point home. It was our senior year, and my friends were talking about their plans for the summer. While I was looking forward to helping out at the pizzeria and maybe earning a little extra for the next school year, they were planning extravagant vacations to places I'd only seen in pictures. One friend in particular was talking about sailing in the Mediterranean. He described the yacht they'd rented, the private chef they'd hired, and the countries they'd visit. It was a world away from my reality. But instead of feeling sorry for myself, I felt intrigued. I wanted to understand the mechanics of their wealth. I wanted to break down the walls of this financial game they were playing. 
I wanted to learn the rules, master the strategies and eventually play the game myself. This curiosity led me to study economics and business in college, and it's what drives me today as I pursue my MBA. I want to understand the system, leverage it and make it work in my favor. It made me determined to understand why some people get so rich, and how I can be like them. My parents saved hard to send me to college but life had a curveball in store. College, a time when most kids are enjoying their newfound freedom, was a period of trials for me. It all started with my grandfather's stroke. His radiant smile and the twinkle in his eyes were replaced by hospital beds and medical bills. The cost was astronomical, an amount that could have bought an ocean of pepperoni pizzas. Suddenly our family was treading water in a sea of financial stress. The money saved for my education was slowly but surely being depleted. I could see the worry lines on my parents' faces growing deeper each day, yet they never once asked me to abandon my studies. Their belief in the value of education was unshakable, even in the face of adversity. So I pressed on, but not without a heavy heart. Every time I sat in a lecture hall or wrote an exam, I couldn't help but think about the mounting bills and the strain they were putting on my family. The guilt was overwhelming but so was the desire to make my parents proud, to give them the assurance that their sacrifices weren't in vain. And then came the student loans. At first it seemed like a lifeline, a way to continue my education without putting further strain on my family. But as the amount I owed grew, so did my anxiety. Every textbook I bought, every tuition fee I paid, was a reminder of the debt I was accumulating. Despite the challenges I managed to scrape through, I graduated and even went on to pursue my MBA at Columbia University. A prestigious institution yes but one that also came with a hefty price tag. Every lecture every assignment is a step closer to my dream, but also a step deeper into the world of student debt. I managed to scrape through and now I am studying at one of the top universities in the country, which means I have an enormous student loan to pay off. But I'm not giving up because I believe there's a way to break free from this cycle. And I'm determined to find it. Watching my family work tirelessly in the pizzeria made me realize, there must be a better way to achieve financial freedom. The quest for financial freedom is a journey that many of us embark upon, but the path is not always clear. My journey began in the heart of a family-run pizzeria, where the scent of baking dough and melting cheese filled the air, and the value of a dollar was taught through the cost of a pepperoni pizza. The lessons learned there, coupled with the experiences gained along the way, have shaped my understanding of money and its value. As I watched my parents and grandparents pour their heart and soul into the pizzeria, I couldn't help but reflect on the stark contrast between their hard-earned wealth and the seemingly effortless affluence of some of my high school friends. This disparity sparked a determination within me to understand the secrets of wealth accumulation, to uncover the strategies employed by those who seem to have an endless supply of money. My quest for knowledge led me to the prestigious halls of Columbia University, where I pursued my MBA. But this pursuit came with its own set of challenges. The financial strain of the tuition fees coupled with the unexpected medical bills for my grandfather's stroke treatment nearly forced me to abandon my academic dreams. Yet, I persevered, juggling part-time jobs and student loans to stay afloat. Now, as I stand on the brink of graduation I find myself reflecting on my journey. I am not from a wealthy family. I have not been handed an easy path to financial freedom. But through the trials and tribulations, the late-night study sessions and the countless pepperoni pizzas sold, I have gained invaluable insights into the world of finance. I believe I have discovered some of the secrets to wealth accumulation, the strategies that can lead to financial freedom without the endless toil and sacrifice that my family has endured, and I am eager to share these insights with all of you. In my next video, I will share with you the insights I've gained on what makes people rich. So stay tuned and remember to subscribe to my channel.